Reform must also recognize that greater care is needed for certain types of injuries. In the Senate, I co-authored the Wounded Warrior Act, which was the first major legislative initiative to address post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury. As President, I will build on this legislation to improve screening and treatment for these severe injuries suffered by many who have served in Iraq and Afghanistan. The VA must also broaden its care for the women who are entering the armed forces in greater numbers than ever. The growing ranks of women in uniform have left the VA lagging behind in the services that it provides. And here the Veterans Care Access Card will prove especially valuable, affording women medical options while the VA improves capacity and expands services. All reforms bring change, and even the best changes can be a little unsettling. What you should know about this reform is that it is an extension of the current system, an extension and expansion, not a replacement. As a matter of duty and honor, whatever our commitments to veterans cost, those commitments will and must be kept. Many veterans of war will tell you that best among us, the best among us, never came home. Those of you in this room remember the names and faces of many such heroes you were privileged to call comrades and friends. I recall more than a few myself. And that is only one reason that America must care for the families of the fallen. During the last two major military conflicts, I worked to increase death gratuity payments. I sponsored legislation during the first Gulf War to increase the death gratuity payment and to double the soldier and veterans group life insurance. I co-sponsored legislation to double the death gratuity payment in 2003 for servicemen and women killed in the line of duty, and also increased the survivor benefit plan for widows or widowers of retired veterans. There's more, much more to be done on behalf of the families that our fallen troops leave behind. And as Commander in Chief, I will never break faith with the ones who never came home. The next president will have many responsibilities to the American people, and I take them all seriously. But I have one responsibility that outweighs all the others, and that is to use whatever talents I possess and every resource God has granted me to protect the security of this great and good nation from all enemies, foreign and domestic. It's every veteran's hope. It's every veteran's hope that should their children be called upon to answer a call to arms, the battle will be necessary and the field well chosen. But that's not their responsibility. It belongs to the government that called them. As it once was for us, their honor will be in their answer, not their summons. Whatever we think about how and why we went to war in Iraq, we're all humbled by and grateful for their example. They now deserve the distinction of the best Americans, and we owe them a debt that we can never fully repay. We can only offer the small tribute of our humility and our commitment to do all that we can do in less trying and costly circumstances to help keep this nation worthy of their sacrifice. Many of them have served multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Many had their tours extended. Many returned to combat sooner than they had been led to expect. It was a sad and hard thing to ask so much more of Americans who have already given more than their fair share to the defense of our country. Few of them and their families will have received the news about additional and longer deployments without aiming a few appropriate complaints in the general direction of people like me who helped make the decision to send them there. 
And then they shouldered a weapon or climbed in a cockpit and risked everything, everything, to accomplish their mission, to protect another people's freedom and our own country from harm. It's a privilege beyond measure to live in a country served by them. I've had the good fortune to know personally a great many brave and selfless patriots who sacrificed and shed blood to defend America, but I have known none braver or better than those who do so today. They are our inspiration, as I suspect all of you were once theirs, and I pray to a loving God that he bless and protect them. Thank you very much.